I like how it's in a plastic wrapping to keep it simple. <laughs> to keep it safe. <laughs> to keep, to it, keep safe. it safe. What would happen to him otherwise? What's that? What would happen to him otherwise? Well, I, this listen, we're not Eastern Orthodox. It's not like we think these are icons. You, I w- would have bet money that you prayed Vespers to it just the other night. <laughs> Oh man! It, what's awesome is you can see all the crowd in the back. Like they are, they're astonished at how good Jesus is at basketball. I never noticed that there was a crowd in the back. Yeah, no, it's the details that make this a work of art. All right, so we need to start the podcast before you show me how how great this is. <laughs> I thought we did. Why when did we not start the podcast? You can start because this you podcast. were just like walking back there. Well, th- listen, you can start this podcast at any time. People are well, I'm starting it right now. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Harrison Goodman, and we're already fighting with our special guest today, Pastor Eli Leitzel from Wheat Ridge Evangelical Lutheran Church in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Is that enough Wheat Ridges, sir? What are we talking about today? Good morning. Uh, first off, it sounds like you were trying to make fun of the, the name of my congregation, which I don't know. No, appreciate. just you just you no, no 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 you were talking about the name of my congregation which i don't appreciate and actually wheat ridge uh evangelical lutheran church is much more biblical than any other uh name of any other churches out there i just want to put that out there um because uh, uh just when when you when you hear paul right uh, uh when he's writing his his epistles um what is what how does he address the church you're right it's actually not to saint barnabas church Right. It's not a uh, uh, Hope Lutheran Church. No. What is it? The it's Saints at the Ephesus. Church at Ephesus. Yeah. To the church at Wheat Ridge. All right. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father. Well, as long as we're being strictly biblical, what are we talking about today? Would you like to show the class? Basketball what? Jesus. We're talking about basketball Jesus. We're talking about basketball Jesus. This is your potpourri for the day. Okay. <laughs> Why? Uh, so if you're, if you're just listening and you're not watching, would you please describe to the class what you, what you're holding? All right. We got uh, a picture of uh, Jesus. It, it appears to be in a crowd. Uh, the crowd is amazed uh, at what's going on. Um, and if you haven't and, gathered, there's a basketball. There's a basketball. Je- uh, Jesus is doing a killer crossover uh, of, uh, of uh, it looks Yellow. like uh, Satan. It might just be a demon, but it looks like Satan. We'll say it's, it's Satan. a muscular so. demon. So whoever it is, it lifts. Right, right, right. And uh, he's falling down. That's how good uh, uh, at basketball uh, Jesus. Right. I mean, he, he put somebody from hell on skates. Like that's actually an impressive thing. Okay. Um, right. Can, it, it, is it laminated or in a protective sleeve or both? It's in a protective sleeve. My, uh, okay. Because Jesus can withstand the got it. devil's defense, but not you. What's that? Because Jesus can withstand the devil's defense, but not you. Defense, I like that. It's a play on words because he's, yeah, no, I get it. Right, good job. So what questions did you have about basketball Jesus? I have so many questions about basketball Jesus. First, why? <laughs> basketball Jesus. Second, second how dare you? <laughs> How dare I? What do you mean? Do I don't know. I... It just felt right. <laughs> All right. So, um, so this I think is worth talking about. Uh, in in uh, uh, shoehorn some theology into some very bad Christian art kind of way. Um, is that how this started? Yeah, I thought it started with the jingle. Would you would, you would you like to sing your jingle? No, I don't know it well enough. I forgot it. That was it's two years ago. I don't believe that. How, okay. So this started with the bad, bad Christian art. Okay. All right. So somebody thought, you know, what would really um, edify somebody's faith as they struggle with uh, sin, death, and the power of the devil, the knowledge that Jesus can ball out. <laughs> he, can, he can play some good basketball, street hoops, as it were. Okay, so where's the, tr- the the comfort for troubled consciences in basketball, Jesus? Or is, is this just uh, an absurdity that is worth talking about for a good reason? <laughs> no, for a funny reason. Okay, I think we could go down the line uh, two different paths. Um, uh, one's less traveled than the other one. Uh, so we could, go, nice. we could go down the path... <laughs> We could go down the path of just talking about bad Christian art. I think that's what had, that had happened 
uh, on our podcast a long time ago. Uh, we had talked about bad Christian art and, and how it, generally speaking, isn't edifying. It, it doesn't speak the truths of the, of, of the gospel. It just puts Jesus in some really uh, interesting modern day scenarios. And we're supposed to be comforted because we see Jesus playing basketball or whatever the case may well, be. So actually, that's, that's worth talking about. Because like, if you can't find Jesus in your church, then you need to find him on the court. Um, like if you can't walk into church and say, you know, I, I know for a fact that Jesus is in the body and blood in the Lord's Supper, um, then yeah, you have to sort of imagine him in other places where he, I, I guess, could work, but necessarily hasn't promised to. Sure. And when we don't have him in, I guess what we could say is, is high liturgical art, um, where we see him in our chancels uh, on a cross type thing, or stained glass windows actually uh, depicting things that he did uh, in scripture. Um, if none of that is there, then yeah, let's, let's just slap him at a fish concert, jamming out in the background, right? I mean, like he's he, not the he best, I guess. Um, but uh, so I, I, I use no fish. Don't worry. I know that it also gives us a chance to um, talk about something that nobody else but us cares about um, in in the humanity of Christ and uh, where we're actually supposed to look for this, right? Well, this, okay. So I don't know where uh, if you want me to be. Uh, um... Uh, take this serious or not because we've had we've had many conversations <laughs> about basketball jesus um you wrote a song about it so you'd be as serious as you feel you need to be okay listen basketball jesus is is uh not that good at, at basketball that's that's my contention and i think you've argued against it and maybe you've just played the devil's advocate um, Get it. but i uh I think you've argued against it. Uh, my contention is uh, basketball Jesus uh, would just be an average basketball player. Um, I don't think he would be able, uh, well, I don't know if he's playing Satan, then he could probably do that. Um, but uh, bottom line, he'd still get beat by Michael Jordan. That's, that's the bottom line in a pickup basketball game is basketball Jesus would lose, lose to Michael Jordan. So – I, I guess because are, are you saying this because like Jesus allowed himself to be crucified under Pontius Pilate, he would allow himself to be dunked on by by MJ. Yes, it's one and the same, right? It's basically the same <laughs> thing. Um, no, my con my contention is uh, in the humanity of Jesus. Uh, we don't have a superhuman Jesus. We've got a human Jesus, right? We look we look to uh, what is it? It's uh, the suffering servant uh, uh, Isaiah uh, fifty two and fifty three, right? Um, mm -hmm. Basically, and I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, to look upon Jesus in the flesh, uh, we nobody would know that it's God incarnate, right? He's not walking around being able to leap tall buildings. He's not walking around and, and, and unless he's he walk on water, unless he's actually doing that, unless he's actually saying, "I'm going to be performing a miracle right now," and he and he does that very thing. Right. Um, but when he's laying aside all of these divine attributes and he's just a human who gets hungry and is tempted and weeps at the tomb and all of this sort of stuff, I have to contend that he would be an average basketball player. I would say less than average because let's just look at the, uh, uh, the height probably of that area, especially back then. And now you're putting him in the, in the NBA trying to play basketball against uh, seven footers. I just don't oh. think it could happen. I understand that that Jesus uh, performed miracles uh, either out of mercy um, because he would see somebody suffering and just want to help. He would be moved by compassion and want to cure leprosy or cast out demons. I understand, too, that every once in a while he, he would actually uh, perform signs that would attest to who he is um, as he went towards Jerusalem uh, to, to you know, per, to preserve this, uh, this, this path that he set forth to, to save us all from our sins. But also, um, at least once, his mom asked him to do one. Um, and, and he just sort of begrudgingly turned water into wine at a party. Um, so like, what if, what if his mom asked him like, Jesus, I, I know this isn't your hour, but also the shot clock's winding down. Would, would you, would you shoot this three? We need, we need a three, right? We need you to cross over Satan, uh, and, uh, jam it from the free throw line. Um, okay. So no, 
uh, these first off when we get the the wedding at cana right that's his first miracle um uh-huh. and john's the only one who talks about it and john sets it up in such a way that that I, I have to believe uh, the entirety of, of John's theology is kind of tied to uh, Jesus and what he's doing at that first miracle, i.e. Uh, Jesus is, is showing himself. Like you said, it's, it's water into wine. What is that helping? It's letting people uh, continue their, their wedding feast? Eh, okay, maybe, but I think it's more than that. I think it's, it's uh, Jesus is showing himself uh, to be who he is and showing the church who we are, right? He's the bridegroom. Uh, uh, we are the bride, and this is going to be his ministry uh, from the right here at the first miracle all the way until the end of eternity, which is never, it's never ending. So this is Jesus uh, beginning his ministry and showing all of us, the church, who he actually is, the bridegroom of Christ, or sorry, the, the bride, and we are the bride. You, you know what I mean. Okay, um, so that uh, throws away your water into wine thing. The uh, the walking on water, uh, you're right, he is still working his way towards Jerusalem. But again, this walking on water thing uh, has much deeper theological implications uh, than uh, playing basketball and be, being able to shoot better than Steph Curry, right? None of that has theological implications. This treading on, uh, this treading on uh, the water, uh, and stop laughing, this is serious stuff. Treading on the water uh, is is treading on death itself. We can get into all that theological stuff, but it's it's treading on death itself, right? Um, again, being able to uh, kill a cross over uh, somebody uh, doesn't do anything. This these miracles aren't for himself. So I'm going back to my contention, and I get on this hobby horse all the time for no other reason than it than it makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> is that uh, Jesus in his humanity, his normal everyday humanity, which is what he was, uh, taking uh, Isaiah's words of saying that nobody would understand him to be the Messiah or God incarnate uh, just by looking at him. Nobody was drawn to him because of his good looks or because he could run faster than Usain Bolt or swim faster than Michael Phelps or jump higher than Michael Jordan. None of that was there. He was just the average. He was man. He was the average man. And Enzo, saying this and confessing this, he would lose 10 times out of 10 in a pickup basketball game to Michael Jordan. Unless right. he said, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm going to dunk on you from the free throw. I guess I really only have two questions then. One, so... I- are you then saying that when the, the blessed apostle, St. John, uh, said that there are many other signs and witnesses that are not recorded in this book, uh, Basketball Jesus is not one of those? Not. Not a single one. Okay. No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think he was, uh, he was uh, playing pickup basketball uh, down the street and uh, winning by miracles now. I don't think so. All right. And then the second question then, um, and, and quite possibly more important, uh, according to the transitive property, uh, based on your uh, plastic sheath basketball Jesus. So what you're saying is Michael Jordan would beat Jesus in basketball, but Jesus will beat the devil in basketball. So are you saying that Michael Jordan can beat the devil in basketball? Oh, the devil's even shorter than Michael, uh, than, than Jesus was. <laughs> right? So... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the devil's the devil's really bad at basketball. Uh, that, that's the bottom line. Uh, yes. yeah. uh, I think probably the great theological take home for all of our, our kids today. Right, right. I mean, Jesus was average, but this uh, the devil's yeah. He's like that. Uh, he's like that nerd who's never picked up a basketball in his life. Hey, and, uh, right here, okay. Right. He's like Harrison Goodman, who's never picked up a basketball in a day in his life, and now he's going to have to. Uh, contend in a uh, a one on one game out there in the street. I don't I don't think Satan's gonna do well. I mean, Bill Murray did it in Space Jam. Oh, Bill Murray was good in Space Jam. He was funny. My I'm goodness. Kidding. Yeah, that folks. Yeah, Can we say that. What's that? I didn't hear. That's all. No, that's copyright. Oh, oh whoops. Bye. <laughs>